Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's, uh, it, we're in the middle of winter and sometimes up here in the, in the great white north, it's, uh, it, it's uh, just hard to, to do things. And, and, uh, and one of the things that we need to be doing all the time is talking with God. And this is one of the ways that we try to reinforce this for you. So uh, anyway, before we begin, we have our usual announcements. You can find us under Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John. Uh, and our website is vicarjohn.com. Uh, and you just go to your browser and type uh, that in on the top line, not the second line. And it should take you right there at any time. Uh, during the service, you can pause and play some music, which is so very important for some people uh, in their worship experience. And uh, uh, some suggestions for t today are, You are my all in all. My faith looks up to Thee. And Lord, I want to be a Christian. We've played that before. I've suggested that before. It's one of my favorites. Uh, anyway, um, or any other song that you like, praise or hymn or whatever, whatever you really like. Uh, also today, uh, you can pause at any point. Uh, you can know you can pause when I tell you when I ask you to pause uh, during our time of prayer. Uh, I'll get it all straightened out here. Prayer is so very important, and, and we need to stop and, and pray. And uh, hopefully, we can we can uh, do that and get that going. So anyway, our title for today's sermon is "Are You Foolish?" or not. Uh, so we'll discuss that in a moment, uh, and then we'll have the ringing in the hour of worship. Let's open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for gathering us here from our busy world, whatever we may be doing, Lord, and just uh, help us to calm down for the next few moments and and uh, and help us to worship you, Lord. Uh, uh, we just uh, uh, just thank you for that you're always there and just. Please anoint us with the Holy Spirit so we can get the full experience of it. And if there's any bad uh, spirits about us, Lord, we ask that you cast them out, Lord. We just thank you that we are always able to come to you like this in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, verse for today comes from Galatians 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 115, and it's a short psalm, so I'm just going to read it. Uh, Lord, who may, dwell in, who may dwell in your sanctuary, who may live on your holy hill, he whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, he who speaks the truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath when it even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not, does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. Praise the Lord uh, for that uh, call to worship. Uh, now we come to a time of prayer, and, and in a moment I'll ask you to pause and, and uh, just remember that we are trying to, to think about God all the time when we're out in the world, that uh, even in this cold, harsh winter, uh, we need to realize that He's there, and, and this is part of the deal. Uh, this is the climate we live in, and, and, uh, and just praise the Lord for that. Thank Him for that. God moments. Just always be thinking God moments, God moments. What can I tell Pastor John on Sunday? Uh, or today, or Tuesday, or whatever day you're listening to this. Um, uh, but just please remember to try, to try to have God moments. Now let us go into our time of prayer. Oh gracious Lord, who has loved us since the beginning of time, we thank you that we are always come to you. We can always come to you with our praises and our problems. We thank you for the faith we have in you even when things don't seem to make sense. You are our wisdom as we pray in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button.
Oh, gracious Lord, we, we thank you so much for, for loving us. We're pretty unlovable at times, Lord, and we just thank you that you're always there and, 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 uh, and just help us, Lord. We look out in the national scene and, and uh, there's just trouble everywhere. Um, and uh, help us to deal with this. And, and even in our, in our personal world, or should I, should I should say, especially in our personal lives, we got troubles all the time. Life isn't always smooth, and, and many times it's our own fault for, for things that happen. But, but help us, Lord, to have your peace during these times, whether it be national or personal, Lord. Just help us to keep your peace all the time, because your peace transcends everything else. And there's just absolutely nothing like it. People don't know peace unless they know your peace. And help, help us to have this. Help us to ask for peace in our lives. We just thank you, Lord. Today we ask, uh, we hold up some people to you and we'd ask that you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. We're thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world and especially in our communities. Lord, we're thinking of our uh, leaders from, from this country and from uh, around the world, Lord. Uh, help us to make inroads into their faith. Uh, Lord, we ask to bless the, the, our troops wherever they may be and, and we ask for special blessings in our communities as we are in the midwinter now. Lord, and, and uh, just get us through these, these next uh, few weeks and, and get us towards spring again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for seasons and all the things that you do. Everything that you made, Lord, is just so wonderful. And we just praise you and love you as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, first chapter, verses 18 through 31. Reading now. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of, of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh, for the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, think of what you were when you think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were noble of birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one can boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. The words of God for the people of God, and all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you so much, and we, we ask that the words of my mouth are your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds, and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think that memories are great things. Uh, I was reading a while back uh, about a pastor named Wayne Major who was remembering 
uh, a stunt they pulled as, as they were in high school. Uh, one, of the, one of the two guys would get in the back of the car and lay that back seat down and hide in the trunk. Okay? The other person would drive and pick up one of their other friends. Uh, the two in the front would get involved in a deep conversation and the one in the trunk would sneak out, uh, back out behind the rider and suddenly join in on the conversation. Wayne had all kinds of stories to tell about the various startled reactions that they got. Uh, it was just a silly, foolish prank that left many memories. I'm sure that some of us can think back, most of us probably can think back in our younger years, and we will remember some of the silly, foolish things that we used to do. Today we are going to look at foolishness from a little different light. Uh, we are going to look at what Paul says is foolishness, and I really hope that there's no one here who thinks that this message is foolish. But if you do, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep listening and allow Jesus into your life. Scott Carmer tells a story of a pastor colleague of his who had a mother call him and say, Pastor, can you come over right away and talk to my daughter? She's been acting very strange since, since she went away to college, and now she has joined the Moonies. Um, the fellow was a good pastor, and he rushed over immediately to try to help this young girl see uh, where she was mistaken in her newfound beliefs. What on earth convinced you to get involved with these folks, he asked. She said that she met a couple one evening, and they had taken her to a movie featuring the Reverend Moon. Uh, when, when I heard him preach that night, I thought I hadn't heard such, a good pre such good preaching since the last time I listened to you. That's why I'm a follower today. I owe it all to your preaching. <laughs> It was at this point that the, this preacher remembered the con a conversation he'd had with an older and much more seasoned pastor one time. When he asked this older man what he had learned in 40 years of preaching, he said, Well, what I have learned in preaching is that the possibilities for being misunderstood are virtually unlimited. And I can personally vouch for that. <clears throat> but... Being a pastor is a wonderful way to make a living because we have the best boss that there could be. Uh, it's also very interesting. I sometimes I wonder where I'm heading with the sermon. Sometimes I feel I've struck out with what I've said. And other times uh, I, I see on the faces that I did all right. Uh, this is much harder for me to do this uh, online service like this because I, 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 can't, I get no immediate feedback. That's why I always welcome comments. Uh, and, and sometimes people just misunderstand what I'm trying to say and that's probably because I, I just didn't say it well enough to begin with. Putting all this together is a very fra fragile process and it really takes the steady hand of the Lord to do it. Uh, I try not to let this be about me but sometimes that just happens because I am human just like all the rest of us. Uh, I, I, I am always uh, a part of the process and I am human therefore I preach foolishness when it comes when the parts come that are about me and this is what Paul is, is referring to in part of his text today. Uh, as we begin to look at this writing from Paul we need to look at the people of the time. The Jews thought that preaching uh, the news of the cross was the most foolish thing they had ever heard. Uh, we have heard many times how they thought that the Messiah uh, would be a, a conquering king who did miracles. But Jesus did not restore, restore the throne of David. He was not a king. As a matter of fact, Ju Jesus was nothing more than a common criminal in their minds. He was considered to be the least of people if he was considered to be anything at all. Anyone would have to be foolish to proclaim him to be a king from the cross. After all, this is just plain nonsense. In today's world, it isn't much different. We have million, millions of naysayers in this country alone. Just this week, we saw an ad for atheists on TV. Oftentimes, these are the people who can quote a passage in the Bible, but they've never bothered to read the, great, the, the whole book. These are the people who watch the History Channel and think that what they say there is the new gospel. These are our friends and neighbors who get bombarded with all this false information and need help to get back on the right track. People who don't know Jesus 
think that the Bible is foolishness. Our scripture tells us this today. I, th I think that most of you will know, or know that I will promote the use of public prayer all the time. Uh, I think that it's so important to stress how vital it is to, to give thanks to God before a meal or, or, or whatever, uh, no matter where you are when you're out to eat. Uh, there are so many people who disagree with me on this, and, and those are the ones who don't know Jesus and think that the message is foolish. And this is okay. It's okay. Every time we state something from the gospel, we're adding a little bit of knowledge to, their non, to this non-believer so that someday, someday the Holy Spirit will get a hold of them and they too will believe. I think we have to be more vocal in proclaiming the truth. Paul is very vocal and blunt. He says that the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Um, these people are dying uh, and they have no hope uh, for, an et for eternal life, no hope at all. These are the saddest people in the world. Um, when you hear about someone making fun of Jesus Christ or our religion, there is no need to get angry. You need to get sad. These are the lost. How in the world do we help these people to know Jesus? I guess the answer is, is not a, of this world at all. We need to just keep on planting the seeds. We need to keep praying before our meals in restaurants and every place else. We need to keep helping the poor in the name of Jesus, always in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> we need to keep on doing the wonderful things that they do in some of our churches. Then Paul goes on to tell us that, the, <clears throat> that for the believers, this message is power, power, the power of God. We come to church uh, on, on Sunday or we tune into a broadcast like this to hear the Word of God. Hopefully you don't ever tune in to hear me, but to hear God's Word because I am foolish. God's Word is not. I am foolish because no matter how hard I try, I will always present part of myself when I preach and the part about me is foolish. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop. It's okay to be foolish in this way. So don't ever be afraid to pray in public or read your Bibles in public or do anything for the Lord in public. Paul then goes on to quote from Isaiah when God says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Now, before we move on here and talk about this, I, I don't want you to misunderstand what I say here. God is not against people who are wise or smart. That's not what Paul is saying. Basically, he is saying that all the brains and wisdom of the world pale in comparison to God. The world, in all, in all of its wisdom, didn't recognize Jesus when he came, so they had him killed. Now, what kind of wisdom is that? You see, none of these people got it. The priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the kings, and many of the common people did, did not recognize Jesus, even though they were from a learned class of people. All the wisdom of the world meant nothing in comparison to God. <coughs> Excuse me. God mocks our attempts at being scholarly and wise and uses unlikely people. Look at David. He was a shepherd, or one of the lowest classes of people. Can you imagine how much, uh, how much, how, how many people, how much people made fun of, of Noah when he was building his, uh, the ark before the flood? Joseph was a younger son and could not expect much of anything in the line of blessings. Matthew was a hated tax collector. The other disciples were, were lowly fishermen who were considered to be as low as shepherds. And the list goes on and on. God is not impressed with our brains. In, in an ordinary sense of the word, he is only interested in our brains or our hearts as they help him in his mission of spreading the good news everywhere. Now, we really have to be careful uh, of this as we live our lives. I used to have to go to seminary a couple times a year and I would see people get so caught up in being scholarly that they forgot that it's the relationship that is so important. We shouldn't be that impressed with theologians. Our wisdom comes from knowing Jesus Christ. 
I have been blessed with by knowing some of the, getting to know some of the wisest people in the world who come from the churches that we have served and visited. You are wise in the sense of God. I love this line in verse 25 that says, for, foolishness of the, for the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. This pretty much just says it all. I know that, that we have all done some, some, some foolish things. It's just part of life, and, and, and we end up doing, that we end up doing some of these things. But I would like you to think about this a little bit. Next time you try to do something, that you consider to be smart or wise, okay, know that it will pale, absolutely pale in comparison to God's wisdom or intelligence. This does not mean that you're not wise. If you know Christ, then He will allow you, you to use some of His wisdom, just like He will allow you to use some of His strength. The more faithful you are, the better you follow Him, His ways, and the better you follow his ways, the more he lets you in on this wondrous way of life. When things don't go so well, is when Satan, who is working through other people, comes along to thwart you. Now, if you have a hard time believing this, Paul then wants us to think about where you were before you were called. Some of you know my story where I was so smart, so wise, that I ended up down and out and had lost just about everything. Some of you may be in a similar situation. Maybe someone is listening today who is struggling to make ends meet in this totally tough economy. Maybe there's someone out there who's struggling with their marriage. Maybe there's another uh, uh, struggle that you just seem, can't seem to win no matter what you do. If this is the case, okay, if this is the case or something else, then confess your sins to Jesus and ask Jesus to live in your heart as Lord and Savior and give Him your troubles. You will have a changed life and it will be for the better. I guarantee it. This will be the beginning of your road to true wisdom, godly wisdom. There is not one of us here today, not one, who was better off before we knew Jesus. Not one. One would think that with a track record like this, people would be lining up to get to know Jesus, but that's not the case and it never has been. We want to do things on our own. We want everything our way or the highway. Usually we have Jesus trying to help us and we don't understand him or even know that he's there. It's kind of like the story of a man from a third world country coming to this country, as again told by uh, Wayne Major. He went with his friend to a restaurant and they ordered tea. Now the waitress brought him boiling water in a kettle and set the cups down. Uh, the third world man picked up the tea bags and tore them open and dumped the tea into the water. The man had to, that was with him had to explain that the tea bags were special, so they could just be put in the water, and the water would seep through them, you know, and there would be no messy leaves in the cup. Well, the newcomer thought that was a great idea. He thought that was wonderful. Then the man, uh, um, then as the man was stirring his tea again, he looked up to see that the foreigner had taken two packs of sugar and dropped them in his cup unopened. The man had good logic. Just the wrong idea. That's the same way as when we try to figure uh, God out in our limited worldly ways. There are so many people who, people who demand proof before they will believe. Uh, remember what Paul has said here. These people who demand evidence of Jesus are the ones who cannot see the miracles that he performs ever, all around us on a daily basis. This is why I talk about God moments. He's all around us everywhere all the time. All the things that we try to tell them is just foolishness. And the same can be said about the proof that we present. The best way for us to reach uh, unbelievers is just to do, keep on doing what we're doing. We need to live the Christian life. Invoke the name of Jesus whenever possible in public. I know that it's not easy in the world today, but don't give up. Don't give up. Keep on praying in pu public. Keep on reading your Bibles. Keep on coming to church or broadcast like this and inviting new people to come with you. We are not in the business of converting people. We are only in the business of planting seeds.
Maybe someday some of these people who consider us to be so foolish will see us with wisdom, godly wisdom. This is a time getting to be the time of the year when our president, <clears throat> president will give his annual State of the Union address, or as one of my colleagues puts it, State of the Onion. Anyway, I don't remember ever listening to any of these speeches because I, I usually get the drift of it by reading about it the next day. Uh, but this is supposedly an important message. It's supposed to tell us wh what we've been doing and where we are going. President Biden will talk about many things when he has his uh, that we may have to do, or, or as we still seem to have some pretty large problems in, in the economy and the virus and, and, and so on. He will probably say that we need to spend a, a lot more on, on science, technology, education in order to save this country and get it back on the right track. He might be right. I don't know. We may need to spend some more on education. But all the education, now listen, but all the education in the world will not save us unless we are anchored in Jesus Christ and the cross. Our message is in the cross. No matter what the President of the United States says, our message is always the cross. So I ask you this question. Who would you rather help, have help you deal with our national problems of uh, someone who has many degrees and is the smartest person in the world and looks at us Christians in the Bible as foolishness? Or someone who is not that well educated and is a completely committed Christian and knows and lives by the Bible? As for me, I will pick the Christian any day and every day because he has access to all the wisdom of the universe and then some. Jesus loves you and will help you if you just ask him. I praise the Lord that he loves us so much and thank you Jesus for first loving us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do, Lord, and, and help us to grab onto your truth that's found in the Bible. Help us to grab it and share it with others and, and tell the world. We just thank you for the love you show us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship for this week. Now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world that he made just for you. Spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Go in God's peace. Thank you. And amen. <laughs>